Right when you are. Am I on? You're on. <laughs> yeah, don't let it uh, get to you. Yeah, don't let it get to me. When you look at mobile homes, there's basically just a, a box frame on top of a, a fishbone metal, metal trailer, basically. And they come with wheels, obviously, and they come with a tongue. Well, sometimes when you look at mobile homes, they don't have the tongue underneath the trailer. Where is it? It's stolen, or they shipped it off for metal, or somebody took it with them. So when you're buying these things, as an inspector, I make sure there's a tongue underneath there hmm. in case you do want to move it, because that's a lot of money just that you may not realize that you have to have. Uh, being that it's up off the ground, everything's pure and beam. Basically, it's just on concrete blocks with a skirt around there. So when you're looking at buying a house or getting it for a rental, the things that you want to look at doing is I start on the outside and look at the skirting, I look at the, the framing, the windows, the doors, and I look at the roof. And those are the biggest things on the outside, obviously. A lot of things that most people don't think about is they see a little hole by the, the skirting. That's where a rodent or a skunk or cat is getting underneath there. If, that, if I see that, I know that there's going to probably be some problems underneath this. Underneath this frame, they've got PVC, excuse me, they've got the... Uh, the vinyl uh, skirting or the uh, plastic to hold the insulation there. If there's an animal getting in there, a lot of times they'll chew that <coughs> plastic off and you got insulation literally just hanging off the bottom of the thing. Is that a good thing? That's no bueno. So you got to look at the bottom side of the thing because that's going to allow vapor moisture to get underneath your subfloor and create some deterioration to your subfloor. And that's kind of the, 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 the basis for this whole frame here is the subfloor. It really isn't a, a uh, the, when I say subfloor, it's just, it doesn't have the, uh, gosh, what I'm trying to think about here. It's so just the I beam. Yeah, the I beam. So there's, there's, there's insulation there's, underneath. Yeah, there's, there's there's no two by six underneath this to to get the, the frame. It's just sitting on on this frame. Then there's also the plumbing and also the electrical. One of the things I was trying to get into this last uh, meeting is some of the things you see underneath the house that you guys will never crawl in to see is the service line that comes in conduit, the gray conduit there, there's some separation on this one, so mice can get in there, rodents and insects, you know, the fire ants, so they can chew on that wire, so that's a pretty big fire hazard for you to, to have underneath there, you would never know that. Uh, one house I looked at, um, it was a depression underneath there, you pull the subfloor up, it was actually rotted, I could see water underneath this house, okay? The guy said, I think we've got a drainage problem here. I said, you do have a drainage problem here, buddy. The whole house was underneath, uh, was just water underneath there. So you obviously walked away from that deal. So you got to look at the drainage on there. Does it slope away? Um, the thing is, is ties. You know, these things are tied down with anchors. Are the ties intact? Are they broken? They're rusted? Are they cut? Uh, you know, vandalism, people get underneath there and start cutting a few of those. Next thing you know, that thing is starting to wobble on one end, twist in half. Um, so you know, a lot of people will store things underneath there that you may not want to have underneath there as well. You know, a lot of petroleum products, just trash, just plain trash. Um, with the ducting, again, it's underneath there, it's not enclosed, so animals can get in there and chew in the ducting. You could be air conditioning the bottom side of your, your, your trailer, your mobile home, and not even know it. Uh, remember the picture I showed you with that hole around the, 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 the ventilation pipe or the uh, suction line? That's what we're talking about right here. These things, everything runs underneath. There's, you don't have vents in, in, the, in the ceiling typically. Um, everything's on the floor. So that hole I was talking about was right where that suction line went through the floor. There's a big opening there. That's where the roads can come in and out or just you're losing heat or air conditioning depending upon what time of the year it is. Uh, when you start looking at the exteriors, one of the things you want to look at is around the windows because typically people think of being inexpensive or the older ones. You might see a little bit of wrinkling, crinkling there. Sorry about that. Up. Oh, that's that's right. Um <laughs> That's where a source for water is. That's why you have the, the little flashing over the top of them. They're easy to take in and out. They're just screws. You pop the window out and pop it back in. Same thing with the doors. They've just, there's little hex head screws. You unscrew them, zip, 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 throw another one in there. Pretty easy. But something like this, you know, everybody wants to make this a family business so we can get hurt walking through these things. Guys, pay attention to what you're doing because it, you know, your kids can come running through here, all of a sudden they're falling out of the backside of a trailer. You got, now you're going to the hospital because somebody brought their kids. Keep the kids at home when you're looking at these houses, okay? Hmm. Um, as far as the construction on the roof, you know, Eb has the, the, the metal tile or the metal sheeting on top. A lot of them have the shingles. Obviously, a lot of these are out in the rural areas. You'll have a lot of, a lot of uh, wind damage that are either be shingle related or the lift the vents up, the flashing of the vents. So you get wind driven rain underneath there and you start seeing little leaks there. You have a double wide, they're actually putting two of those together. So you'll have a seam going down the center there. Sometimes you start seeing that seam pull apart. Why is that? 
because the foundation is now shifting a little bit because it's sinking on one side. It's actually pulling the house apart. So some of these things are blatantly obvious when you look at this, but some of them are hidden, which is underneath or on top. Um, you know, all the house, all, everything on the inside is still supposed to be uh, to, to the International Residency Code, GFIs, make sure you've got the grounds, electrical panel, wash uh, the, the uh, water heaters. I see people put new ones in. They don't have drain pans, and they put wire nuts together. And they're just wires are just hanging out there. You have what they call brother-in-law wiring, brother-in-law installation. I've seen them on the outside where the <coughs> floor is completely rotted out underneath the water here because it's been leaking so long. So there's a lot of things that you, you know, even though it's a simple box, you still have to have a home inspection, in my opinion, to save your, your investment because you could be buying a little, lot more headaches than it's worth. A lot of times when you're out here in the rural areas, they don't have the, the condenser for the air conditioners. They're, they're missing, so you got to take that in consideration. Uh, you, have see, you do see window units every once in a while, but uh, I've seen, I remember what I was talking about in the, the previous real meeting about Dish, Texas, you know, the mobile home up there. All that area has, has the benzene issues. Great, beautiful mobile, mobile home, granite countertops, double wide, absolutely gorgeous. But it was because they were processing that gas up there that there's a benzene contamination. So you got to look at where you're buying it to make sure that you're not getting into a environmental issue or something you don't know about in that particular area. So you know, think about it a little bit. Here we're in a mobile home park. I did some for another guy. He will, all he wants to buy is mobile home land. He doesn't want to deal with the trails or anything like that. But his issue has, or his um, land has septic on there. He maintains his own septic system on here. So when you're buying in properties like this, find out if it's city services or private sewer. Make sure that that's kept up and how he maintains that, who does the inspections and things like that. Because if you have a lot of properties in here, that can get real ugly real fast hmm. if that guy doesn't maintain his septic service. So there's a lot of, everything is pretty inexpensive here, but there's some things that can get 